They were not. The, the Flintstones were nominated 50 years ago for an Emmy. Wow. Yep. Wow. And Family Guy is the only other cartoon to ever get that. So you were on the first one. You know, I don't know. I don't know if I'm on the very first one, but I know I'm in. I'm in that the first what, whole. You know. What was the first one? I. You know, I don't have a clue. Wow. I've done so many. It's probably in 1998. 99. I think 98, 99. Wow. And when did it come off the year? What year? I don't remember, but I think whatever year it went on, it came off. I think that same year. I think it was only on for a year or a season. Wow. And then and then it came back like a year later. They put it back on. Right. Well, what else is new with you? Okay, I, I, did we talk MTV years? Or let's let's talk MTV years, and uh, you know, let's. I'm going to let you take the lead here. What would you like to talk about? Well, actually, I just wrapped up a, a motion picture project. I did a film called um, Mind of Its Own, where it's about this college kid. He's a wacky college kid, and he's got uh, issues. He's he's got a talking penis, and he wakes up one morning and doesn't realize there's somebody, and he thinks there's somebody in the room, but it's really his penis. And it's this whole story how he argues and has has ups and downs and relationships with his penis once he finds out he almost has a heart attack but then you know it's a it's a funny story i do the voice rocco so i do rocco the voice of the penis that's the that that's the role i do for the movie and I, the director is a huge fan of mine jace cobalotti so he he wanted me in the movie somehow some way so he said johnny i, I gotta have you in the, so i did a cameo as this crazy kid's boss my name is mr hamby and i have to fire this kid because he's nuts because he I, I don't want him in my building and in my in my operation because i'm his boss and i think he's out of his freaking mind and and so i have to let him go so that's the scene i have and, and it's actually a very funny scene it's the first time I, I do my gay character on screen who plays the penis I do the voice of you, the penis. You, I, yeah, I, I, I got confused. Yep. I, I do the, the voice penis. of the penis through the whole movie, but I make a cameo as his boss who has to fire him. Do Rocco. It, Rocco's based on New York Frank Rizzo. That's it, Johnny. You know, it's just a real tough guy, you know, just like a like take no crap, you know, Frank Rizzo type voice. Does he speak with his penis or does he just is he just hounded and tormented and he's tormented and, and he fights did, did they actually become friends? Yes, they become friends and, and, and by the end, you know, Rocco has to has to go and, 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 and you see how the rela- it's actually quite funny that they, Rocco has to go. Yeah, he's got a no pun again intended. No, but Rocco's gotta split the scene and he's like gotta leave Johnny on his own now and so it, it's it's kind of funny how the relationship developed into that. Hold it, wait a minute. He's got to split the seed. What, what what happened, to Rocco? He can't be physically leaving. In other words, he's right. His, it's, it's more of a, a, a it's a more his a mental personage. thing, right? And he's telling Johnny that, hey, Johnny, if you got to be on your own now, man. It's a, you, you all you always had the ability. So it's more like it was a, a, like, but it's funny how the relationship is there through the movie. It, it works out well. How's how how did he become Rocco? I guess that's what the director was looking for, just a tough, you know, a real tough kind of, like a New York sound and style kind of voice for this particular movie. I was watching a family guy last night, just was speaking of penises. I guess you can. Dr. Ruth did it, you know, years ago, so we can do it now. Uh, talking about Peter O'Toole, and Peter makes the point that Peter O'Toole's both names are nicknames for... Oh. For, that's right for penis that's right I hope we're getting away with all this yeah. on VAJ and on that's, that's pretty funny and on uh, and on uh, audiobookradio.net so Rock of the Penis is this the first penis you've played yeah the, absolutely this you're, the you're looking for more penis work at this point yeah you, it's, and, it's, and how many times could you say penis in a five minute period right it, what's funny too is Sal Rosenberg years ago I had that a skit where Sal Rosenberg would make he would knit little clothes and he'd make little things because he believed his penis also you know could speak to him and, and he always wondered why does his penis because Sal Rosenberg's penis had teeth and it was nasty and it would always like you know b- bite at him like as if it was some sort of rat that was in his pants and so it was a much more different like thing than what we did here in, in this movie and, and I thought I told the director too I said it was very funny I when he came forward with that idea I told him it was very funny that you had that idea because I did a skit with Sal years ago that that he was crazy because he would always argue with his penis and the penis would literally bite him and, and, and he and he didn't understand why, because he would t- take the time out to make all nice little clothing and vests and little cowboy hats, and he couldn't understand why his penis was so mean to him. And because that's what Saul with the phobias. That was Saul's big thing. Saul always has. Oh, he always had some sort of phobia going on. You know, that was the famous thing with Saul Rosenberg. Wow. Okay. I can't. You know, he. Saul was always like, Oh, I can't see. Damn it. And and oh, his shadow. 
It's my shadow when he was talking to a psychiatrist. It's always there. It's always after me. Damn it. And the psychiatrist, it, that's a great call. The psychiatrist is trying to say, well, you have to work through this. You've got to blah, blah, blah. And, and it just goes on and on. But it's the same thing. Saul's always got all these crazy phobias that are attacking him. Right. Uh, what else? Okay. Now we we, uh, we uh, have we left peanuts. Penis. Uh, we uh, do we have penis back uh, in its uh, place again, or can we move on? Oh, absolutely. absolutely. What else? Uh, let's. let's uh, I'm going to let you take the lead. This is great. Go ahead. No, I what else? A, uh, just you know, just covering the bases here. You know. Okay. Okay. You, we rounding second. What do you got for us? What's in the future? Well, you know what? Um, I. What it, the future's wide open as far as I can see. You know, the, the, the fame of these characters and how wonderful and how people are, so, they're so endearing and people really get a kick. You know what it is too, in today's times, people, they gotta have a laugh. People wanna laugh. They need something to make them laugh. And it, it, it just a little lighthearted, little laugh, and it's a good thing, you know? And, and that's pretty much what I'm all about, you know? People, they go to my website, you know, uh, they, they'll order, let's say, just a good example about laughter. They'll order a birthday greeting. I'll do birthday greetings for people in whatever character they like. They can choose the character. They go to the jerkyboys.com and they say, "Oh man, this is great. My brother's birthday's coming up." Or and they'll and why? Why do they do that? Because it makes them laugh. And they'll always give me this long, long email telling me that it, they're so happy that they can do this, that they could have this, that I would do this for them because they grew up listening to the Jerky Boys. They're huge fans, and and to be able to have these characters that I do do personal greetings for them or their family members blows them away. How did that come about? I mean, are you sending them? How do, how do they wind up getting your... And give some information on the other folks may want to do that. How do they wind up getting you to do the greeting? How does that set up? What do you do there? Well, is that a Twitter kind of thing? No, this is not Twitter. This is on. on this is right off thejerkyboys.com. They can go there, and a lot of time when they get to thejerkyboys.com, they're just browsing through. They're just looking at different things, and they're looking at different, you know, this, that, and the other thing, and they, they just... You know they can select it, and if they if they want to choose that, I get a lot of uh, of women getting it for their husbands. Uh, I just did one for a woman who's uh, her best friend it is this guy who's just a huge fan, and she's a huge fan, so she went and bought one for her her good buddy. And again, they all write in the letter the same thing that it's so awesome that they're now going to have a personal like from Frank Rizzo. They'll have a personal greeting. Like they'll they'll type me out in the script. They'll write a little bit of stuff that is only pertinent to those two people. Right. So when Frank Rizzo starts barking stuff back at them, that's all information that's really privy to them. It's kind of cool because it's it's such a personalized deal to get Frank Rizzo. It's you know what it is? I I call them on the website. I call them roasts. They're just like a roast. Right. So, and, yeah. and that's you know. And so if it's from Saul Rosenberg, Jack Torres, big old badass Bob the Cattle Rustler, Frank Rizzo, whoever. Right now, do these? I'm a little confused. Do they get a CD from this, or is yes. it? Yes, oh, they do. Yes, okay. I, I, if if there's time constraints where they need, like they're a little behind, or they sometimes they do it last minute, I'll send them forward the MP3 so they have that, and then I, I take the actual the actual physical CD that I do for them is done in waveform, so it's much higher quality, and that's that's autographed to the person it was purchased for. Right. Are you a free time kind of guy? Do you have a lot? I know that you were busy this weekend. There was a wedding and you were kind of busy with yeah. things. We were supposed to meet next last, uh, last week. Yeah. And there's that same, and I don't know, 770 area code. Yeah. I have no idea what that is, but we're going to let it ring again. Uh, maybe it's uh, maybe it's Frank Rizzo. Of all things, yeah. we're talking about pick phone, it up, phone calls. Imagine. <laughs> that's, that's, isn't that so fitting? We'll pick it up. It'll be Frank. Uh, Frank on the phone. Uh, what do you do? I uh, uh, is there a spare time, or what do you do free time? I mean, uh, you're, you're not you're not always in the studio. What are you doing beyond this? I mean, uh, what do you what do you do with your free time? Let, let's talk about your uh, life away from voices. Hey, what do you say there, rubber ass? What's going on? It's me, Frank. <laughs> Frank Rizzo. <laughs> okay, spare time guy. Yeah, no, it, it's you know what? It's you don't have a lot of spare time. I have two daughters. I'm always running around with, with them. Like, you know, a lot of times it's softball. My, both my girls play ball. Yeah. My other girl's a varsity cheerleader. My, lo my older one, obviously, varsity cheerleader. And um, she runs track. So it's like I've, I've always got to get them here, get them there. So you don't, you don't have a lot of downtime. It's like a lot of 
driving her. And my wife, you know, obviously we we ha- we all work together. But when you have kids, it's 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 man, it's I'll tell you what, you got a lot of work to do. And and a lot of people don't realize, you know, they, I, oh, they it's going to be easy. Yeah, you, we'll have some kids. It'll be, it's the hardest thing. Man, it's now that I have children. It's the hardest thing because you got to be on top of everything, and you know you got, you're the guy to, to to doing errands, doing this, doing that, or else it's working around the house or getting things done. I have a big excavator that I like to play with, and I like to uh, you know get some stuff done with that. And you know excavator. Yeah. Yeah. Talk about the excavator. The excavator. What do big, you excavate? It's a bit oh, around my property. I have a lot of. It's a very rugged terrain where I live, so I do a lot of work with boulders and and just digging and moving around and landscaping and whatnot. Wow. So and, 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 it, and you're excavating. Yeah. Well, on my property. You're moving boulders. Yeah. Or, wow. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's what I do in my spare time. In your spare time, when you're not being gay and you're not being right. a penis and right. you're, you're you're busy moving boulders. Right. Right. Doesn't it kind of sound kind of strange? It's, it, it absolutely <clears throat> does. It's, it's, but it's a hell of a life, I'll tell you. It's a, it's a wonderful life. And your daughter plays softball. She's an athlete. Yes, she's a very good athlete, and uh, she's a great musician. She's an excellent musician. You, you, she's been drumming since she's literally, like, could walk. I, as a matter of fact, I bought her first drum. It's a little one that goes around your waist, and you just walk around with it. So she, I bought it in, in the village in Manhattan. Down in where I used to stay in the village, down around uh, Charlton Street, and I bought her this little drum. And then when she first started walking, she would walk around playing the drum. It was the funniest thing you ever saw. Then when she was like two, my brother bought her a real drum set, but a miniature one, a tiny little drum set. And we just knew then, wow, this kid, this kid's amazing. She's got this incredible talent. My wife, when she was in the womb, when she was being, you know, in the womb, she, my wife used to play every night Mozart and Handel and, and Beethoven into her stomach every single night, religiously. <laughs> and when my daughter got her first drum set at the age of two, my wife and I would be upstairs waking up in the morning and we would hear her downstairs and she wouldn't be like most kids would just slam and bash the drums. She would just, all we would hear is the tom-toms going boom, 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 boom. And she was just <clears throat> gently listening to tone. And then my right hand to God, one day we woke up, not too many weeks after that, and we hear a two-year-old downstairs doing a beat without being taught a beat she's hitting the cymbals and she's doing timing and she's doing a beat with the foot and I said that is amazing that's incredible to this day she like just the other day at the wedding the, the drummer let her sit in at the wedding she hasn't played drums in months she will not practice I don't know why she I can't get her to practice and she sat in at the wedding and she was incredible she was incredible she just songs that she's never even heard before she just went along with the band and just kicked kicked ass well, you know, my father, excuse me, did I cut you off? I'm sorry. No, no. My father was a big band band leader. Wow. And he, uh, Henny, Youngman was his, Henny Youngman was his violinist. Wow. Uh, John Carroll, the actor, was his lead vocalist, his male vocalist. So my dad was in the big time. Now, I'm not a musician. I can't do it. But my daughter can pick up almost any instrument, sit down and play it. Uh, I've, I've watched her. She's very musical. And her hands, because it's in the hands also. Right. It's one thing to be musical up the head, right. in the head. But it's another to bring it forward. Right. And the hands are what brings it forward. That's right. So there's no blockage. It's 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 it's, it's just, able. It's flow. It's just it, able it, to flow. You've got that flow. Right. And um, and when my wife was pregnant with Kimberly, uh, we were living in Laurel Canyon, in California, and driving along, and light my fire was just coming out. Uh, uh, Jim Morrison. Uh, Jim Morrison. Yeah. The Doors. And today, my daughter is a tremendous. Jim Morrison fan. Uh, she and and Light My Fire would play like every twenty minutes on the car radio, right. and and she was in the womb. Right. And I'm convinced that you know the the, the unborn in the womb will hear. They can. They supposedly, allegedly, uh, theory has it they can hear and can and and remember these things.